you a fan of this podcast? Do you wish there was even more juicy content for you to sink your ears into? Well, there is. You can become a premium member of this podcast for $5.99 a month and get full access to an archive of over 50 bonus episodes. Additionally, we release a bonus episode every single month. That's a ton of extra content, including my personal interior design diaries, extra tips, my talking about trends, and so much more. Additionally, you'll be keeping us on the airwaves each and every week because your premium membership money goes directly back to making this podcast amazing. Check us out at affordableinteriordesign.com, click on podcast to learn more and to become a premium member today. need a high-end designer or a lot of money to get a luxe look. Be your own interior designer. This is Affordable Interior Design, the podcast. Here's your host, Betsy Hellman. Hi, everybody. I am so excited to be back with you again this week. And today I have a very special guest. I am joined by Latoya Smith. Hi, Latoya. Hi. Hi, Betsy. So as you guys know, I've been showcasing some graduates from our academy program, just so you can hear about their journey, maybe, you know, something about their lifelong dream of becoming designers or something that's pulled them to become an interior designer will help unleash some career aspirations in you or just hearing their stories, I'm sure will resonate and inspire you because Latoya has one of the most inspiring stories to come out of the Academy, which is why I'm so glad to have her join us today. Yeah, I'm so excited to be here. <laughs> well, and I want to take it way back, Latoya. I want to take it back to the day that you set up your call with me and were thinking about joining the Academy. Tell me what was your background before then? Okay, so I am a 100% disabled veteran from the U.S. Army. I've worked for the government all my life. I did 20 years with the government. I worked for um, Army Corps engineers. I worked for NSA. I have I have all of these like backgrounds and executive assistants and all of these things. I'm just program managing and all this and. COVID happened. So I've never in my life been without a job, like never had to sit in it. I was, you know, I've been working since before I was 16. So when COVID happened, I'm home because I have lupus, I have autoimmune disease. And so I have to, I had to protect myself, I had to be at home. And it allowed for me to really do the things that I enjoy to take the time to actually feed my soul and um, concentrate on what would make me happy, which was terrifying. Like I felt like a bum, right? I didn't, I'm at, I'm not getting up, going to work. I'm not in traffic. I'm not doing things for other people. It was time for me to actually do what I wanted to do. And I um, was decorating my home and I just looked into podcasts. I hadn't listened to podcasts at all, um, actually. And I happened upon your podcast and I just went in like full force. I I listened to every single podcast. Like I was so in tune with you. I wanted to learn. And then you mentioned an academy. And I was like, what the heck? no, I can't do this. Like, I haven't finished my degree. I didn't go to college. I went to the military instead. I didn't get my bachelor's. I'm almost, well, now I'm I'm 41. Like, who starts over to do something so creative at this point in their life? And so I said, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to do this. I'm going to invest in myself and see what happens. And I felt, I felt at least I could talk with you, right? Right. To see 
because I felt as though you were sincere and you would tell me what route what route was better for me what if this was actually something I should pursue as professionally so that's where it all began well and that is such a leap right going from a government worker going from somebody who's always been a part of the grind right whether that means commuting or the nine to five or whatever that looks like but somebody coming from that traditional workforce where you have a boss, you have deadlines and timelines and place to be in an office to work at, to just completely thinking outside the box. You know, COVID gave us so many opportunities to reflect, to say what's working, what's not working. You know, life is so short, so precious. What am I doing with mine? Am I doing what I love? Is there something deeper? But I think very few people heard the message from COVID, lived sort of the circumstances, and turned it into drastic action. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Your action was drastic. It was extremely drastic, but honestly, my dad was an artist. And, you know, he did photography. And he actually told me that I was, I had it in me. I did, I had, I had figurines and uh, art displays in libraries when I was in high school and middle school, but I didn't take it seriously. And of course, if your dad is telling you to do something, you don't want to do it. And I I went into cosmetology and I went really far with that. It came really naturally. I, you know, I got my cosmetology license and I went from state to state and I went really far and I loved it. But that was a tangible medium for Mm -hmm. coming from New Jersey, right? We didn't look at like canvases. We had each other. We look at hair. And so I did that, but it, it really didn't feed me the way that I thought it would. And so then I started doing party planning, like, and then I started doing, um, bridal and I love floral. I love floral arrangements and from fresh to silk and, all of those things. And I even did clothing. I did personal shopping. I did all these things that were all creative. Right. But when you're creative, you have to find the right medium. Mm -hmm. It it doesn't, you can do all types of things. That's the thing. You have to hone, you have to hone in on something that really connects with you. And so that's how I got here. But how did you know? Like, it sounds like you knew you had some artistic drive or a passion in the arts. It sounds like you were trying to connect it with something that could make money, right? Right. Like going to cosmetology school, there's a very clear path to using my art to make money. But then how did you take the leap to interior design? I, well, I think it started off, honestly, when I bought my home. My Mm -hmm. home was built in 1900. Um, I had just bought my home when COVID happened. Um, Yeah, maybe nine months, maybe. And I love my house. I have the original floors. I have the original staircasing. I have, it's it's a big house, the the stone porch and the, it's just, it it opened my mind Mm -hmm. to creativity. It became my canvas. Mm -hmm. And so, um. My husband, he actually does um, vintage clothing. So we would already go to estate sales and thrift stores and things. So while I'm there, I would find these pieces of furniture. And it fascinated me as to one, people were just throwing it out. Yeah. And that it had history and it was beautiful. And it was one of a kind, right? Like these pieces were just so different. And I was like, I could actually see what it could be. I could see that. I can envision it in a space being utilized differently. And I had the time to do it at that time, right? I could take this $10 side table that's made of pure maple and with all of this workmanship on it and take it home and I could strip it. I could paint it. I could stain it. And 
all of a sudden now this side table is in my living room and I don't know where it came from and maybe it has a stamp, maybe it doesn't, but that, that drove me. I think connecting it emotionally and artistically was what brought it together for me, like home yeah. and space and how important that made my home, how personal that made my my space because I created this because I I can the the sky is the limit right I don't I'm not limited to what is in Pier One or what's in right you know Pottery Barn the sky is the limit so, so kind of connecting those dots you were going along with your husband checking out sort of these thrift options the estate sales sorting through feeling creative about your own home feeling inspired about your own home and working a lot less due to coronavirus and having this time and space and energy to throw all your passion into your current place. Yeah, exactly. And so, you know, I remember us first talking. I remember that conversation so clearly when you signed up for a call to explore if the Academy was right for you. And, you know, I definitely thought you were a fit based on your goals. But you had so many passions and also you were kind of far from getting started, right? I assumed you were far from getting started. Watching you skyrocket has been so inspiring, which we'll talk about in a minute. But I was so excited for you for a new path forward. But also I was like, which path will she choose? There are so many passions going on here. How is she ever going to decide what to go all in with? So how did you make that decision? That was hard. Yeah. That was hard, and it became even more um, difficult at first when I got into the academy, right? Because we have this community, and all these people are doing different things. So I, I, I was like, okay, maybe I want to do staging, right? Right, and people are doing fantastic. They're doing fantastic things with staging, and. But it didn't, it didn't, it didn't meet with me. Like it just wasn't, it didn't settle right with me building something up and having to tear it down. It didn't sit right with me. I thought, I thought that the interior design had to be within a mold, Mm. right? I thought it had to be either I had to be with the firm. I had to go to school. I had to, it was like a set and that was what I was used to, right? I was from the military. Like, give me, give me, give me the steps and right. let me get there. But I, I learned that with you, that um, there is, you know, there is different ways to approach it. Um, just because you can do something, that doesn't mean that you should do it. Right. 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 Can we say that one more time? (laughs) (laughs) Just because you can do it doesn't mean that you should. And that you said that to me once because I try to do it's a lot of things I can do. Right. Right. We can all do we can do things, but it didn't sit right with me. And did I want to start another career? that didn't really sit right with me. Mm -hmm. We have to choose where we put that energy and we have to wait for what lights us up. And even being in the academy community on Facebook and seeing what all the students are doing, it can lift you up. It can help you see the possibilities. But ultimately, you have to make your own path. What's right for me? Because I remember I was so surprised As you got into the academy, as you started doing the modules, as you put it out there to the universe and maybe to your local community that this was what you were doing, people kept throwing opportunities at you. And I think there's something really powerful in saying, this is who I am. This is the adventure or the new undertaking I'm embarking on, right? I need help getting here. And I just think it's so inspiring how open you were but also how discerning, because as you started the Academy, somebody threw an amazing opportunity your way. Do you remember the, the staging opportunity I'm referring to? I do. 
I and I remember it. us having a coaching call and really getting into it. And I just loved your own personal clarity. Somebody's handing me the keys to something that could make money right now. Oh, yeah. Tell me why you decided to go in a different direction. Okay. So I, someone actually just wanted to give me their staging their staging equipment. They wanted to be rid of it. They wanted to, you know, give me the steps to do this thing. And um, I wanted, I realized that I didn't want, I didn't want a, a box. Like I didn't want it all tied up in a bow for me. Right. I'm, I'm 40. I wanted to find myself I wanted it to be not a box of her stuff. I wanted it to be my things. I wanted it to be my collection. I wanted it to I wanted to own it. I wanted to own myself, my truth. I wanted to find myself in this pandemic. That was my goal and if my if it sent me back to like working for the government, so be it. Like if it took me back there, then okay, I could live with that. But could I live with this kit? Like someone just hit giving me the keys. I couldn't live with myself. That wasn't a real try for me. Mm. It just felt like it just wasn't me. It wasn't me. It was her giving it to gifting it to me, um, her and passing it down, and that she wasn't me. So um I had to walk away and It was terrifying. I tell everyone like this, being in the front of my own space, my own store, lavish, like really just um, owning it and saying it's mine is like the most terrifying thing, but the most exciting thing I've ever done in my life. Like scared. I'm scared every day. I don't, I don't have all the answers. I don't know. And that is terrifying, but it has brought me so many things. Like I, it's like when, when they said build it and they will come, I swear to you, that's what happened. I built this space and people, the news have come. Well, let's take it back. Let's take it back because I want to fill the listeners in on your trajectory. So I'm trying to think, when did you join the Academy? Um... Oh my God. Was it like a year ago? It was like a year. Yes. And you were given (laughs) this thinking opportunity maybe a couple months in, maybe between two and four months into the Academy. I remember having sort of a heart to heart about, you know, I'm seeing all this success in the Academy with people using their interior design skills to stage. Is this the right path for me? And I just thought it was a very compelling opportunity. I totally wanted to hear more and thought, wow, the stars are aligning for her. So when you rejected that opportunity, more, you really, I don't know if you knew where you were going, but you knew what it would felt like, feel like, or you were waiting for that feeling. So tell us where you are now and how you got there. Like, Okay. So at the time, after the staging, I actually took on a client for interior design, right? Bessie is like, make money right? You, that's what you say in the academy. Like you got to You got to make some money. So learn this skill, my client make on money. make yeah. money. So yeah. you're giving me these tools and I need to use them. So I went ahead and I took on a client. Client was a lot. She was a lot. And I'm glad that I did that because it made me realize what part of the process in interior design did I want to be present in? What was my leg of the race, right? Like, mm-hmm. what do I want to do? do? Do do I want to do this? Do Like, ju- is it just because of this one client? Am I questioning my whole, you know, because yeah. sometimes it will make you question everything. One bad day, will make you question, what am I doing? Why am I doing this? And then you see other people progressing. And I'm like, well, why can I be, why can I just be good with what I'm given, what what this is? Like, why can't I just accept this point of view? Why can't I just do it the way other people do it? And that's not for me. So then I did that. 
And I finished that with that client. And by the end of it, I knew that I wanted to, I wanted to refinish furniture. I wanted to, um, I wanted to get furniture and things out of the landfills. I wanted to, I saw people grasping as straws in the pandemic. They were met with um, supply chain issues. Mm -hmm. They have limited space, right? They have now either like kids at home. They have, um, they, they're not, they're not distracted, right? They can't leave the house and go to work and be like, oh, I'll deal with that. I know the living room is a mess. I know they have, they have workspaces they need to produce within their home. They have um, kids that need to school and everything. So I started saying, give me your stuff, give me your things. And they would literally pull up to the driveway, drop off a sideboard, a dresser, um, and I would refinish a dining room table, a dresser for them. I would Zoom. I would go on Zoom and they would show me around their home and I would tell them exactly what can be used, what can't be used. It became a thing. And I'm like, how are they finding you? They're finding me, well, I started doing these pieces, these $10 pieces from Goodwill, and I would sell them on Facebook Marketplace. I would flip this furniture. And then um, people, it, it went from one side table to, hey, well, can you send me pictures of where the side table is going? Are you sure it's going to work? And they would send me their space and inspiration. And then all of a sudden, I was doing their their kids' room, their their mud right. room, all of these little things. And I was like, is this really a thing? And I was doing it in my home, which was not was not meant for um painting and dragging furniture oh, in and right. out of my beautiful home. And I was on my knees in my basement in Baltimore. You know, the basements are low. <laughs> the basements are low. I'm refinishing dining room tables oh in the basement goodness. on the floor. Like I was like, okay, I can't do this. I can't, especially with my rheumatoid arthritis, my lupus and things like that. Yeah. Scratching up my walls. I was just like, I can't do this. So of course, I started freaking out. I'm like, okay, fine. I guess this is the end. I need to. It's not comfortable, right? How am I? All these things pop into your head. How am I going to reach people? Am I credible? Um, Do I have those tools? Um, Is this enough? Like, okay, I need to get back to work. I got to make money. I have bills to pay. And I said, you know what? I have to go all in. It felt like, it felt like a sneeze. I know that sounds, it felt like something I had to do. Mm. I had to find my own space. I had to find a space. I think I actually called you and I was like, I contacted you and I was like, Betsy, I'm thinking about opening up a space, like a storefront. And you was like, eyebrows went up like, (laughs) girl, what? How did you get this? Where, Where is this going? And honestly... I hunted and I knew that um, I had to put myself out there. I found a place which is really an upscale location. It's the shops at Kenilworth in Towson, Maryland. Now, this is is bougie. (laughs) It is like boutique. Mm. The one blouse is seven hundred dollars. Oh my gosh! I was I'm I'm not even joking. They have nothing like me there. Um, it's right next to a Porsche dealership, a BMW dealership. It has Trader Joe's there. It has, now they put an all house. The um, furniture oh, yeah. store of is going to be there. It is upscale. And I am the only, at the time, I was the only African-American business owner in the entire mall. Wow. And I contacted them and I said, I want to do a pop-up. I want to be there. I need the space. Um I only have, I can't pay $1,500 a month. I don't have the money. I don't even have, I don't even know if people will come, honestly. But I have to do this and you have this space and I'm 
you know, and they was like, why do you want to be here? And I said, because you need me. Now you're just calling the management company. I am I'm calling management. Of a mall. Yes. yes. You, just, you, you just need me. You, yeah. People don't have furniture. Right. You guys, you need to really expand your horizons. I'm telling them that this is something that they need. They need because the community needs it. Right. right. We right. need it. We can't get any furniture. People need this. And so um, everything in my store is secondhand. Everything from a coaster. Well, hold on, hold on. That's a big leap. Okay. Yeah. So let's, let's let's get let's get into this little part. So you call the management company. You say <laughs> you guys need me, and I need you. Yes. But I need a deal. I need a deal. I'm new at this. Yes. And this management company of a mall that doesn't yes. know you. No. Right. How do you get them to say yes? How do you get them to agree to terms? This is no longer a pop-up shop. No. So tell me what happened. That's not an important. Well, I got no. me a lawyer, first oh, of all. Yeah. I got me a lawyer because I don't know what leasing is. And um, I want to do this right. It is a passion of mine, but I had to check myself to remind myself that it is also a business, right? Mm-hmm. I had to check myself. So I got me a lawyer and I negotiated my behind off. Now there was some give and take. Of course, I'm in a mall, the hours of the mall, I have to be open. Usually stores like this, stores like mine are not in a mall. We have right. like right. Thursday, Friday, they're, they're, they're shop or, uh, hours, right? They're shop right. hours. So I negotiated my my um lease down to 700 750 a month including utilities wow i did and you know it was a space that they didn't have to refinish they Right. right so um i just i did it and i i was there two o'clock in the morning three o'clock in the morning sanding in the back getting everything ready for a month to open this store um, and I used, <laughs> I used every favor I possibly could have for like people helping me because it's furniture. It has to be delivered. It has to right. be all of that. And, um, I had a vision of how I wanted it to be and, but I knew that I had to do it. And so I, I did it and I opened lavish furniture flips and interior designs on June 14th. Oh and God. it's been what nine months maybe and um yeah now it's it's crazy i i was on the news like two weeks ago it's insane it is wild like if you think about your trajectory right from signing up for the academy hold on i'm gonna look at the exact date here don't i'm don't. pulling it up uh let's see here it looks like december 16th so i guess it was a little over yeah a little over one year and now it's time for a quick commercial break do you love this podcast do you wish you could learn even more well we have an online class bundle our online class bundle is comprised of three online classes beautifying your home for less styling your home and the fundamentals of feng shui each one of those three classes is between 30 and 45 minutes long and chock filled with visuals and tips things that will help you to style your own space or help out with other spaces additionally With the pack of three classes, you get an autographed copy of my book, Affordable Interior Design. You get all of that for only $99. Once again, that's the three online classes as well as the book for only $99. You just go to affordableinteriordesign.com slash classes. Once again, affordableinteriordesign.com slash classes to buy your bundle today. And if one of those classes sounded intriguing, but maybe you already have my book or some of the other topics are not of interest, you can buy the classes individually at that site as well. Each class is $40. So head over to affordableinteriordesign.com slash classes to get your bundle or your online class today. Thinking about going from December to then in June, having a store in a mall that's all yours mine not even starting the academy with that vision but starting the academy with a passion that you were willing to see through and you know what i think is so interesting is that each step of the way as i was listening to your journey you followed a passion and when you hit something that was uncomfortable 
right? Like the client who was more difficult than you thought, or, you know, refinishing this furniture in your house, which was messy and not very conducive to a healthy lifestyle, right? Each time you hit that roadblock, instead of giving up, you took it as a lesson. Like, what do I need to learn here? Right. Right. Oh, I need to learn that right now I don't want to take clients one on one. I might want to serve clients in a different way. What else could I do? Oh, I'm already doing this thing. Could I turn this into money? You know, this furniture refurbishing and then find a way to weave my interior design into that offering. Exactly. So I think the exciting thing is hearing you go from leading your life on other people's terms. You know, and of course, we know in the military, for sure, that's on somebody else's terms, timeline. You, They tell you where to be and when. Exactly. To completely saying, I feel something. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it looks like. Mm -hmm. But I feel this. And now you're on TV with your storefront. Now you're like rocking it. And you just told me right before this call, I said, Latoya, who's at the store right now? Oh, I have an employee. I mean, this is huge. I hope that you feel the pride that I've been feeling for you. And it makes me emotional because I remember that first call. I mean, I literally have goosebumps right now. And I remember the other calls, right? The coaching calls, Mm -hmm. the support where you weren't sure what was next. No. But you knew what wasn't working. Right. Um, I, when you're finding yourself, when you're finding yourself, you're trying to really look within, right? Um, when you're doing something for 20 years that doesn't quite fit your, um, I was successful you know, I'm successful. I have a successful career. I have a pension, right? Mm-hmm. And I, I got comfortable with being with with that. That was the feeling of success mm-hmm. of of doing things other people making other people look good, right? Um, giving into their needs, um, uh, putting myself on the back burner, um, pushing forward. Um, going through traffic and stressing and for something that really wasn't mine. And so when I found something that made me happy, I didn't, I felt like an imposter almost Mm. like, um, like it wasn't enough. Like, what am I doing? Am I just a kid playing with paint? You know, get it together because that's what we, that's what we've been conditioned to do. We get up, we do what we have to do to survive. Right. But there's all different types of ways to make money. Um, yourself, um, is worth investing in. Well, and I think that's just it. You know, you weren't just a person who had a paint can. You decided (laughs) to invest in education. You plunged all in and took those modules and said, I'm going to learn this stuff. I want to be this. I want to change and live life on my terms. And I think it's so important to recognize that you didn't just, you know, reject what wasn't working. You decided to commit to a program and education to find something new. And I think there's something very different. And tell me how you feel about this. I'm also in my 40s. When you reinvent yourself in your late 30s, early 40s, you do so with much more intention. Mm. When you're discovering yourself again, right? I think a lot of people discover themselves in their 20s, right? As they're kind of doing their first jobs and seeing what they like, what they don't like as they're going through school, making choices on what degree they'll get, whatever that looks like, right? But when you're discovering what you want to do in your 40s, there's an urgency. There's a commitment. Oh, yeah. There, you know, what did that look like? Because I I completely relate. Oh, my goodness. Okay. So (laughs) it was, I I swear, like this whole year was full of things that I've never done before. I, I, I committed to the process 
of learning me, of really meeting LaToya Mm. without the pressure of whom, whomever other people was comfortable with me being right. Right. Um, I, I want, I, I wanted to stop saying, I want to be happy. I want to be flexible. I wish I could do this. Oh, let me, I, I can only, I only have, I can't wait for a Friday. Oh my God. I can't mm. wait for a Friday. All my weeks, my days, my years was me rushing to the weekend. Yeah. Right. To yep. rushing to five o'clock to get to happiness. So I had to say, I said to myself, what happens after five? What happens on Friday when I get off of work? What is it that I do during those times that I'm rushing to get to? Because that pocket is where you find yourself, right? That's when you really figure out what you enjoy, what does and that freedom mean? What exactly. does that feeling actually look like? What activities yeah. am I doing? What sensations are going on inside me? What am I rushing off to do? Mm-hmm. Is it refinish a piece of furniture? Is it yep. watching TV? You know, exactly. what is that motivation? Yeah. And I think asking critical questions about your own happiness mm-hmm. is really important and something that a lot of us finally get the luxury to do in our late 30s, early 40s, because We don't have to answer to our parents anymore. You know, we're making our own money, whatever that looks like. And now we can look and say, what's working? What's not working? I alone not only have the power, but also the resources to make some changes if I want them. But I'm so impressed with you because I think at many steps along that journey, you face that imposter syndrome. I remember us talking about it. And how did you overcome that? Um, how are you still overcoming that? I know it's a it's an evolution. It is, and it's, it takes every day, honestly, because nothing that I'm doing today is anything I've done before. So who's to say I'm an imposter? Maybe this is whom I've always been, right? But I've never committed to it. I've never mm-hmm. been open to it. I've never had the opportunity to do it. So I kind of, I have a talk with myself and say, I find, I find um, comfort in thinking that is, it's already written, right? Who Mm. we are, we are books, right? This is just another chapter um, of me. And I, I, I love this book. Like, oh my God, this is such a good book. I can't wait. It's good. I can't. It's so good. It's so good. If someone would have told me a year ago, oh, if someone would have said that this is where I would be, you know, on Facebook or when they flash back to like pictures a year ago, and I'm just amazed. Who is that person? And it was such a short time ago. And I remember that person, Latoya, so clearly, which is why, you know, you are the epitome of feel the fear and do it anyway. You just move forward and you move forward following your own gut, which I think is so inspiring, not only for me to watch, but for everyone to listen to. So I was so excited when you said you'd be on this podcast because I just think, first of all, the wind is at your back. And I want to know what is the next chapter for LaToya. I want to be watching it for sure. Oh, my goodness. So what do you think is coming up for you? What have you got? Well, um, I'm actually, I'm looking for a space to expand. Oh, my gosh. I, I, I'm running out of space. And um, it's a very small space. I want to do classes and things like that for painting and refinishing. I I want I want to reach more people. Mm. I want um to give people um just encouragement on building a space that brings them joy regardless of what's popular or what's on trend. Really tuning in to what makes you happy 
and no matter what color it is, what print it is. But there's a way to get that and for it to look aesthetically pleasing and not to cost a lot of money and not to walk into your sister's house and say, oh, I have that table. Oh, I have that chair. It's your own. So I really, I am doing a um, a show house in Ellicott City, the historic Ellicott City of Maryland. That's coming up in May. Oh my goodness. Um, yeah. So I'll be doing that, taking a, a lot of pieces and reaching more people that way. Um, I... I need more, another staff member. Oh I, my gosh. I really do. Well, put I it need, out there to the universe. We've got lots of people listening. I do. Might I really need our area that wants to prep my furniture and things like that because I want to do it all. And honestly, I am doing it all. I'm buying it. I'm looking for it because everything in my store is pre-loved, pre-owned. So I shop for it from, from the start to finish is me, but I can't do it all. And yeah. I learned that the hard way. Um, I just, I just can't. Um, but so I'm looking for someone. I'm looking for some space for God's sakes. I need some more space um, to grow. And yeah, um, like I said, I was just on the news. Um, I was featured for Black History Month on WMAR for Channel 2 of Baltimore. And they did a whole segment. I thought it was going to be like 15 seconds. It was amazing. And it was five minutes. It was long. And actually, it was from a customer that walked in and said, I know someone in television. And then she said, I'm going to make a phone call. Next thing I know, boom, I'm on television. And amazing. it's just, I just, I'm open to whatever the universe has set forth for me. I, I get to do a little bit of both. I get to go into people's homes and decorate and do vignettes and set up things for them. And I also get to sell little things and artwork and search for unique items and refinish and paint. It's like I'm living every day in in a dream. Aww, and every day's Friday. It is. <laughs> every day's and Friday at five. Honestly, yeah. if it wasn't if it wasn't for you. I I have to say that um when I found your podcast I f- I felt like it was tangible. Mm. You I f- at one point I knew what I wanted to do. I knew that I wanted to do something creative. I knew I wanted to do interior design. I knew I was interested in it, but I didn't think that it was attainable for me for Latoya Smith from Newark, New Jersey. Like um I I thought it wasn't until I I heard you speak about it and talk about it and break it down and welcome me into the academy and tell me, you told me that I could, I could do that. I could be big if you told me that, that you literally said it. And, um, you know, it's like you planted a seed Mm. and I, I am so thankful I'm so thankful for it because you can talk to your friends about it. You can talk to your family about it, but they honestly, they can't see past what, what the image that's already in their head of what they, what they put you in, what box they put you in. So for you to see more in me, I think that that was, it was fantastic. I, I felt not like I wasn't alone. Yeah. You know, and I thank you so much for doing that, for opening it up. I'm so, you know, so serious. That's the whole point of the Academy. And that's the whole point of the podcast is to demystify interior design. It's not something you have to have a special eye for. It's not something you have to go to a special school for. You do need education. Mm -hmm. There are things you need to know. There are things you need to learn to be successful. But It's something that you can learn outside of the traditional structures that aren't necessarily set up to make you a success or to give you financial freedom or to give you time freedom. Those structures are set up to put you back into the system, to work for somebody else, to do it how it's always been done. But if you want to do your own thing and if you know that you love interior design and if you commit not only to the passion, but also to doing the work, 
oh, like yeah. doing the classes. So I think I saw in you an immediate commitment. I saw the passion and those two things are things you can't buy, but when they're there, I know that that person will work for it. And I know that I'll be there to support them. Right. So when I think there's something there for you, when we were talking through that staging um, opportunity, you know, I'm looking through your eyes so that I can help you get there. What does success look like for you? And I see lots and lots more success coming right at you. And I'm going to be watching your journey just as I have been this whole time. And I'm so glad that you got to share it with our listeners because I've had goosebumps multiple times during this conversation. And I'm just so proud of you. I mean, I expect all of our students to go far. I expect all of our students to take this education and run with it. But when you see it manifested so quickly, I'm just really impressed. Oh, my. You know that, though. You know I'm impressed. I, I just, I love that you said that. I, I really appreciate it. I really appreciate it because I'm a person that moves on. Like, I do something and I give myself no credit. Like, I just, mm. I do it. And I'm like, okay, that's done. Oh, television is done. <laughs> oh, that's done. Oh, like, I'll probably look back on this and be like, oh, the podcast is done. <laughs> like, that was just done. That was just a day. But no. I think we need to give ourselves more credit to say that was special. That was important. I did that. I achieved that. I was open to that. If I wasn't open to it, if I didn't make that jump, then I would not be here with you. With But also, if you didn't say no to those other things, right? Didn't say no to the other opportunities that were oh, thrown yeah. in your way. So I think sometimes we should celebrate the no's oh, yeah. as much as we celebrate the yeses, because yeses can sometimes be easy. What our parents expect, what society expects, what's the next step in that traditional path. Mm-hmm. And sometimes the no's are the things that were so much braver. No, that's not for me. No, I don't feel quite right doing this mm-hmm. today. Um, So I'm so proud of you for listening to your nose. And now everybody's going to want to know where they can find you. Everybody's going to want to work for you, LaToya. So tell people, where can they find you if they want to see more of your furniture, if they want to watch that news clip? Oh, yeah. So um, I'm very active on Instagram and Facebook. On Instagram is lavish furniture flips with an S. Um, and interior design, Lavish Furniture Flips on Facebook and also lavishfurnitureflips.com. I have a little website where you can see a couple of my pieces, but I do videos on Instagram and I'm live. You can come up with me shopping and all of these things. And every time I get a piece and I'm working on it, I love to do a live video. So yeah, just find me there, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. I'm all over the place. <laughs> I'm everywhere. Good for I'm you. everywhere because I want to reach everybody because this interior design is attainable for everyone. Honestly, yeah. it is. And it's so important. It really is. So if you have the passion and you commit, you can make it happen. And you are a perfect example of that. And I'm so honored that you came on the podcast and we'll be seeing each other more in the Facebook group for the Academy. So don't worry. We're, we're definitely not losing touch. Um, and we'll have to have you back when you write a few more chapters so you can tell us about them. I can't wait. Well, thank you, Latoya, for sharing your journey and I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. You've asked for it, and we have answered the call. For years, you've been saying, Betsy, you're talking about all these great design concepts, but we can't visualize them. You're describing the picture that the listener sent in of their problem, and we wish we could see that picture too. After all, a picture is worth a thousand words, and I do my best to describe them, but there's nothing like seeing it for yourself. And that's why Affordable Interior Design, the podcast, now has a YouTube channel. Not only do we have a YouTube channel where you could see recordings and clips of these podcast episodes, we also have an Instagram, a Facebook, and so many other exciting things. You should check it out. Head over to affordableinteriordesign.com slash links. 
Once again, affordableinteriordesign.com slash L-I-N-K-S links. And when you go there, you will see links to our YouTube page, our Instagram page, our Facebook page, and more. Please check it out. Follow and subscribe so you can see everything I'm talking about. A big thank you to our amazing producer, Catherine Heller, to Aton and the MBCR House Band, and to Affordable Interior Design, the sponsor of this podcast and the premier place to get an amazing look on a budget. Check out affordableinteriordesign.com. If you guys love the show, the very best way to support us is by spreading the word. Tell your friends or write us an awesome review on iTunes. So until next week, guys, thanks so much for joining us, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.